Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of polymorphism. So in our previous video, we looked at inheritance and this idea of derived classes. So we could create some base class with some common member functions and uh, data members. And we could implement multiple derived classes that build off of this base class and inherit these data members and member functions. Now, in a situation like this, right, one of the things that might be useful would be if we could say group together these different derived class types, right? So we could group together all of these different types that inherit from the same base class, right? This might be a very useful thing to do. And one of the ways that we can do that in C++ is through this idea of polymorphism. So polymorphism can be translated to mean uh, many shapes or many shaped. And when we're talking about it in the context of inheritance, we're typically referring to this idea that we can treat objects of different types as say the same type. And we tip what we typically mean by this is that we can treat objects of the same derived class as their base class, right? And this makes things very nice because we can put objects of the say you know, the same base class type together inside of our STL containers. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at today is kind of the basics of this polymorphism and how we can treat these objects of different types as, say, the same base class type. So let's go ahead and open up a new example here, and we'll call it polymorphism.cpp. Uh, and inside of here, uh, we'll start off by just including IO string. So we can do some printing. And of course, we're going to need a main function. Okay, now we're going to be using a classic example of inheritance today. So one of these classical examples is that we create some base class for animals, and then we implement multiple derived classes for different kinds of animals that all inherit from this base class. So we can start off by implementing our base class. So we can create some say struct uh, called animal. And then inside of here, we can say implement a single uh, member function. So maybe we'll just create some, you know, member function called speak here that for our, you know, at least for our base class here or our base struct, it will just print out something, some defaults, right? So maybe it'll just print out um, default speak function, right? With an exclamation point. Okay, then we can go about uh, implementing our derived classes for different animals. So for example, we could implement um, some struct dog here that inherits from our animal base class. So we have this logical relationship here where um, our dog is a type of animal, right? So our dog inherits from this animal base class. So we'll go ahead and create this type here. And just like we can with our uh, normal functions, we can do things like this member function overloading. So I can overload this uh, function speak here and we can implement our own for our dog uh, derived class here or derived struct. So in this case, I want my uh, member function speak for our dog uh, derived class or derived struct to say something like woof, right? Something more specific to a dog. Then I can go ahead and say copy this uh, completely and paste it. And what we can go ahead and do is just create one more derived class for say um, type cat here. And instead of saying woof here, it'll go ahead and say something like meow. Okay, so we have a simple example here, right? We have a base class called animal, and then multiple derived classes that inherit from this base class. So dog and cat. And each of these derived uh, classes or structs overloads the speak method. So they have their own custom speak method for the specific animals. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through some basics here of just creating some objects and calling these um, overloaded uh, member functions. So for example, we can create some uh, some object of type dog here, so some dog D, and we can call d.speak to call the speak member function of our dog. And we can do the exact same thing for cat. So we'll create some cat C and then call c.speak here. And what should we expect to happen here? Well, both dog and cat um, are overloading this uh, speak member function. So for our dog object, we should see printout of woof. And for a cat object, we should see a printout of meow. And if we go ahead and save this, and we compile polymorphism.cpp with G++, create an output executable, just called something like polymorphism. Okay, so we have our executable here. Let's go ahead and run it. 
and we see kind of what we expect. Right? We see woof for our dog object and meow for our cat object. Now, one thing that might be useful to do would be if we could interpret both of these derived classes as our base class. So remember when we have these containers like our std vector, our std vector can only hold objects of the same type, right? So it has a single template parameter. Um, so our vectors can only hold things of say type dog or type cat. So that's a pr that presents us with a bit of a problem here. If we say have um, multiple different kinds of animals here, like dogs and cats, we might wanna group them together somehow because they're all animals. So let's go ahead and see how we can say interpret our dog as our base class, as this animal here. And one simple way we can do that is just with a simple reference. So instead of creating, say, you know, a reference um, to something of type dog here and set it equal to our dog object, instead what I'm going to do is create a reference to our base class here, or rather of this animal base class type. So I'll create a reference to some animal and we'll call this say a1 here, and then we'll set it equal to our dog object here. So what exactly are we doing in this expression? So we're creating a reference to something of type animal, but we're passing it this dog object. And the reason why we can do this is because animal, right, is being inherited by dog. So what we can do is we can interpret our dog object as this base class here, as this animal, right? So this is perfectly valid. And I could even do something like a1.speak here. Now, what are we going to print out in this case? Well, now we're interpreting our dog object like an animal. So we're now going to see the animal speak method. So again, we're not creating a new object of type animal here. This is just a reference. We're just creating an alias to our dog object here, but we're going to treat it as our base class now, right? And we can do this because dog inherits from this base class animal. We have to remember here that this dog derived class is just building on top of this base class animal, right? Um, and because it's building off of this base class, we can reinterpret it as the base class. Okay, and we can do the exact same thing for our cat, um, our, our cat derived class as well. So we can create some reference to say, um, say a2 and set it equal to our cat object. And then we can do, um, a2.speak down here, right? So we're creating a reference to both our dog and our cat objects, but now we're treating them, uh, treating them like they're of this animal type here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, minimize this and we can go ahead and compile, recompile our example with G++. Okay, everything completed successfully. And we can go ahead and run our executable here. And what do we see now? Well, from our dog object, we again see this wolf printed out. And from our cat object, we again see this meow text printed out. But now from our two references here, so our reference to our dog object that we're treating like an animal, we see default speak function. And for our reference to our cat object that we're treating like this animal base class, we see our default speak function, right? So we're taking our derived class type and we're treating it like our base class. And when we're doing this with these uh, functions here, um, these overloaded functions, we're going to get, you know, in the case of, you know, these references down here, we're going to end up using our um, base class speak member function up here. The one that says default speak function. Okay, so that's a little bit about the basics of polymorphism here. So we can treat our classes of these derived types um, like our base class type. And a lot of times this idea is called upcasting. So we're casting from a derived type back up to say a base class type. And this is a very important thing when we get to say, you know, wanting to store these different objects together in some container like a vector. Now, so far, you know, what we're looking at in the context of polymorphism is this idea of static polymorphism. So really all of this polymorphism and you know, reinterpreting of these objects is occurring at compile time, right? So our compiler knows that we're treating some object of type dog like an animal right here. And it's making the decision of which, uh, which method to call or which member function to call at compile time. Now there's cases where we wanna be able to make this decision at runtime. So say, you know, if we're treating these different objects of type dog and type cat as our animal, 
we still might want them to act like a dog or a cat object and call the speak method for type dog and type cat. And for that, we have to get into this idea of virtual functions and this idea of dynamic polymorphism. But that's something that we're going to be talking about in the next video. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for today. I'll again put a reference to this derived class um, CPP reference page below the video. And as always, you can find this and any other example at github.com slash coffee before arch. But again, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and hope you have a nice day.